Jefferson Sotaldo, he's a difference maker. Create goals for himself. Jefferson Sotaldo! He create goals for his teammates. He's dynamic. He's got a lot of personality and will add to what we need in the attacking third. Played at big clubs in Brazil. He's played in big games with big players. Marquez Soteldo. So we know about his ability to play in big moments, and we know how he can rise to the occasion. So we're very excited to add a player of, of his caliber, his quality. He's an excellent player now. And he'll only get better in our environment. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the press conference today with Jefferson Soteldo. Thanks for joining us. To get us started, we would like to welcome Toronto FC President Bill Manning and General Manager Ali Curtis, who will be providing opening remarks and followed by media Q&A session before we continue with Jefferson Soteldo and Coach Chris Armas. Uh, Before we start, uh, we'd we'd like to ask all media to raise their hands, ask their questions. We're going to start with Jefferson questions in English as well, and followed by Spanish. Uh, We have Nick uh, helping us moderating, so please raise your hand, and Nick will take it for him. Uh, Bill? Great. Thank you, Alejandro. We are are pleased today to... uh... He is a player that, that while young, is very experienced and we think he's going to add a new dynamic to our team and, and live up to the, uh, the term designated player. A uh, few people I want to thank. Uh, Ali Curtis did a great job seeing this deal through. Uh, it was very complicated. The folks at Santos and Wachapato um, were very instrumental in pulling it through. His agent, Sebastian, um, many thanks to him. We started out one day at 10 a.m. in the morning and went to one o'clock in the, went to one o'clock in the in the evening uh, to finish out this deal. So we're very excited. We have media from Toronto and all throughout South America today, um, and we can't wait. He had his first training session today with us, um, and 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 it was great to see him around our players. So uh, we're we're very pleased, and uh, I'll have Ali take over and say a few words. Thanks, Bill. Um, yeah, today's an exciting day. We're, we're really excited to, to add Jefferson to, to the team. Uh, I think we'll, we, we know that he'll be great for the team, great for the city, our fans. And so it's, uh, it's, it's very exciting. Um, I'd like to say a few words of thanks to our board, um, you know, in supporting us in this, uh, in this acquisition. Um, uh, they've been supportive uh, throughout uh, this journey. Also want to say thank you to uh, Sebastian and Seca Sports who are here. Uh, to make this happen. Um, it was a complicated deal, um, but I think, you know, he worked really hard on, on, on the deal and we all kind of worked together collaboratively and we're happy to see it through and, and, and start this journey. So very excited. Uh, we think he has all the qualities to be um, successful in this league and successful within our team and to help us achieve our goals um, uh, throughout the year. So uh, it's an, ex- an exciting day and excited to, to, to be here. Thank you folks once again for joining us. If you have any questions for Ali or Bill, please use the raise hand function on Zoom. We'll begin this afternoon's proceedings with Neil Davidson of the Canadian Press. Thank you, good afternoon, Bill and Ali. Um, Ali, could you tell uh, tell us what fans, uh, uh, Toronto FC fans can expect to see from Jefferson? What kind of player is he? Uh, he's the dynamic attacking player. Um, that can help us. He's very dimensional, two-footed. Um, will be able to get the ball on the run, but then also be able to kind of create goals uh, from the inside and outside and combine with his teammates. And so we were looking to really add a whole lot more dimension to what we're doing in the attacking third. And also we wanted players that when they don't have the ball, um, they're attacking their opponent in the same way when they have the ball. And we think he'll fit well into Chris's system, um, into our team, and into the culture and family of our organization. So. 
uh, it should be exciting. Um, he's powerful. He's explosive. Um, you'll be able to see that from day one um, and help us kind of create more attacking chances that gives us an opportunity to win games and to win trophies. So um, it's exciting. And I think you'll see and you'll be able to feel his energy um, in the stands in terms of his work rate and, and willingness to try to help his teammates. Thanks, Neil. We'll go to John Molnero next. Hi, guys. Uh, thanks for taking the time to speak to us uh, today. Um, Ali, I'm just wondering with uh, what's going on in the world with the COVID pandemic. I mean, how difficult was that in terms of getting this deal done? Can you talk a little bit about, you know, the obstacles in getting this done? Yeah, um, yeah, COVID is it's, it's challenging, especially, you know, the situation um, in, in Brazil is, is also a bit challenging. But with COVID, it's just, you know, in terms of getting players um, medical examinations, um, in terms of the different quarantine periods, um, you know, it, it's harder to, to see a, a player in person. And normally you want to get to meet them in person, um, meet their family um, throughout the process. Um, and just like everyone around the world, you can't do that in person. You've got to do those things virtually. So um, there are some challenges, but you, like all uh, things, you just try to work through them. Um, and with Jefferson, we were able to do those things. We were able to have Zoom meetings uh, in WebEx um, to speak with him, to speak with uh, those around him, to do a little bit more research that you have to do off the field in terms of um, you know, speaking to former teammates, former coaches, all those types of things. And all the boxes were checked. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're happy, we're excited that today happened. Um, it was a little bit different, like I said, because of the quarantines, because of COVID, because of not being able to meet in person and doing things virtually. But um, Jefferson has been on our radar for, for some period of time now. So um, we're glad uh, that we were able to make this happen. We'll head next to Laura Armstrong at the Toronto Star. Hi, Bill. Hi, Ali. Thanks for taking the time. Um, I wonder, you know, when you're looking for a designated player, obviously that's a big move to bring somebody in. How do you balance um, the urgency of wanting to have a guy of that stature come into your environment with making sure it's the right player? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say a few words and then maybe even bounce it off to Bill. If it, um, I think you, in, in all situations, you try to make responsible decisions. Um, and it doesn't matter when it is. Um, sooner is always better, but getting it right and getting the right fit is, is super important. Um, with Jefferson, we felt that um, he was the right player. He was the right person. He would fit within our culture of our team and organization in the right way. Um, and obviously, because of COVID, um, the transfer window changed a bit. And so um, the window closes on June 1st, which gives, gave us a little bit greater flexibility. Um, but we wanted to bring the player in as quickly as possible um, so that he can start to integrate into living on a new, in a new continent, um, learning a different coaching um, style of play, um, getting to know his teammates. Anytime you have more time um, to integrate yourself in an environment, you know, the greater the percentage chances of success are. Um, and, and we've got games that are coming. You know, we, we've played now four Champions League games. We've played two league games. Um, so to the extent we can kind of get him going as quickly as possible, that plays a factor. Um, but the most important factor is to make sure that we um, got the right player and got the right human being. Uh, and I think we did. So I know we did. Yeah. Bill, anything? Yeah. And, you know, Laura, good to, good to hear from you. Um, you know, a designated player tag in Major League Soccer is 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 comes with high expectations. It's a you know, it's a big um, position role to play within a team. You're only allowed three, and um, the best teams get them right. And the teams that win championships generally get their designated players right. So, um, like anything, we did not rush into this decision. Um, it was challenging, as Ali mentioned, um, but we. When we, when we found out that um, Santos would be in a financial um, position for us to make the deal happen, uh, we moved fairly quickly uh, because we think he is a player that one, will live up to that designated player tag. And Ali mentioned fits, checks all the other boxes. Um, we think he's a guy that's gonna help us win a championship. Um, and that's, that's at the end of the day, what, what matters for us. We'll head over to Joshua Cloak at the Athletic next. 
Thanks, and Neil, great to hear your ringtone. We've all missed that at the training grounds lately. Um, Jefferson is 23. He's your youngest designated player since 2013. I'm just curious what kind of role his youth played in the decision to sign him and, and what that youth kind of allows you guys in terms of your roster planning moving forward for the next few years. I mean, I'll let Ali say a word. You know, Josh, he has over – you know, well over 200 professional games. So while he's young in age, he, he is not young in experience. And, and that was critical to us. Um, you know, the, the, like I mentioned, designated players are guys that need to be your best players on the field and difference makers, guys that can help you win a championship. Uh, the added benefit is that he's 23 and, and we think his best years are still in front of him. Um, and, and we think that's a benefit, but it wasn't the reason um, to acquire Jefferson at 23 years old. He just happens to be 23 years old. It was his body of work, uh, 270 games or so. Uh, he's played as a professional, started out as 16 years old. So a young player, but, but we think meets all the qualities of the designated player. And that's someone who's gonna be a difference maker, help us win games. Yeah, I agree with Bill. I mean, I think age is just one data point. Um, maybe his age will change the average or median age uh, of our starting lineup, but um, he is a player that's dynamic and that we're excited to have. Um, and, you know, I think what Bill mentioned regarding experience was that was a data point that was very important to us. Um, you know, putting aside um, how old he is, you know, how many, how many, how many games has he played um, with the first team? And he played in a big club in, in Brazil. And so he has that experience in playing for a big club in big moments and performing and not just performing, but really thriving. And so um, we're excited. Um, and, you know, like we talked about, you know, his age is an added benefit, but he's going to be an incredible player for this club. We'll head over to Rafael at Radio Canada. Hi, this question is for Ali. Uh, obviously because of his size, I think he will be quickly compared uh, to uh, Jovinko. Just wondering if you could either uh, just announce the difference between his style of play and, uh, and Sebastian or the similarities in their style of play and the position they play? You know, I, I think if we only look at height, then, then there's some, <laughs> then there's some, then there's, there's some similarities, but you know, two very different players, um, both playing the attacking third. Um, but we're, 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 we're focused. This day is about Sotaldo <laughs> and about Jefferson. And we want to just keep, keep it to that. It's an exciting day for Jefferson. He's earned it. Um, his family has earned this. And so um, I think the fans and the players and the staffs around the league will quickly be able to see what type of player he is from the jump. Um, like I said, he's dynamic, powerful, um, can combine with his teammates, looking forward to see the relationship that he developed with Pozuelo and some of the other, some of the other guys. But he's an exciting player and, you know, the type of player that I think fans will want to uh, buy a ticket and come and come to the game. And I think um, the fans that don't come to the game will be, will want to watch him on TV. So um, uh, very excited uh, to, to get him going. We'll go to Michael Singh at Waking the Red. Thanks, Nick. Hey, Bill. Hey, Ali. Hey, um, when you originally started this search for, you know, your third designated player, you were talking about finding a player who scores goals at a high clip. Is this, is Jefferson Soltelto sort of fit that mold? Or did you adjust a little bit because of the opportunity? I think that like, it's not just, you know, it, it's really about creating goals yeah. um, and, and goal creation. And so um, part of it is, is do you score those goals directly or do you, um, you know, do you assist on those goals or do you create situations that result in goals? But at the end of the day, they're goals. And so really trying to find a player that can help us create goal scoring opportunities that translate into goals was our philosophy going into trying to find a third designated player. And um, Jefferson, we feel will help us in pursuit of that uh, in terms of goal creation, in terms of um, the way we play as a team unit, um, being dynamic, uh, and at the end of the day, um, winning football games. We'll head back to Neil Davidson at the Canadian Press. Thank you. Uh, Bill and Ali, uh, you've both said, as Tim Laiwiki did before you, that how important character is when you uh, acquire a designated player. 
obviously Jefferson uh, at just 23 has a family and has responsibilities others his age um, perhaps don't. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what he's like as a person, where he, his background, uh, family, etc.? Obviously, you liked what you saw. What kind of guy is he? Yeah, we're, we're still we're still getting to we're know still him. Still getting to know him. You know, he, he's <laughs> only been here uh, seven seven days or so a week. But you know, I think you know during the process, we found a, a young man that um, has a lot of belief in himself. Um, has uh, a great family. He's got three kids. Um, uh, has a lot to prove. Wants to prove himself in this league. Um, he has good relationships with his family, with his friends. Um, he has a good heart. He's a good young man, um, and that's important. Um, whether you're bringing in um, a, a player or whether you're bringing in a staff member, we've we've made that very clear that that's our north star, you know, at this club. Um, and so with Jefferson, we're excited to get to know more about him, to, for his personality to come out and for us to experience that. Um, again, you know, I think there was a question earlier about the impact of COVID. And, you know, if, if I would say, you know, you do, you do tremendous amount more research and we did a lot, you know, pre-COVID, um, but you do a lot more research. There's more phone calls. Um, there's that time to try to get to know someone in a virtual setting. And now it's our opportunity to get to know him uh, in, in, you know, in the flesh. So um, that relationship will evolve uh, between Jefferson, between his teammates, between Jefferson, between his coaching staff, between Jefferson within the club, and then also between Jefferson and the fans and in the community. Um, and we're excited about it. And he also, you know, a number of the references that we checked with ex-coaches and people that knew him along his career, um, came with glowing marks. Uh, and that was really important for us. People we trust um, spoke glowingly about him and his character. We'll go to Bernardo Queros. Thank you. Hi, Bill. Hi, Ali. Uh, Dairon Queros from BBM Radio Miami. Uh, I wanted to ask you, which are the aspects uh, to any of you which are the aspects that you could have noticed that call his, atten his attention to come to play to Toronto FC and to MLS? Yeah, I think, I think when you, you know, you, you open up a couple of videos and all of a sudden you see, um, you know, a guy running around the soccer field with a lot of heart, a lot of spirit, um, um, uh, with a lot of pace, a lot of quickness, power. He's dynamic. Um, and combining passes with his teammates, but then also creating goal scoring opportunities for himself, for his teammates. Um, and that was clear. And, and, you know, you can see that in the highlight videos, but, you know, in order to acquire a player of his caliber, you really, you're looking at an entire 90 minute match. Um, and we did that. Um, and not just, um, you know, Chris and our scouting staff and myself and Bill and everyone involved in that in that process um so that was really important so he's going to be an exciting player and like like we said it's the type of player that when he touches the ball in the attacking third you know you 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 kind of are at the edge of your seat we'll go next to michael leach go ahead mike uh hey guys um thanks for doing this today um jefferson uh, does he have much of a relationship with Erickson Gallardo, being that they're both Venezuelan? And if they, they do have a relationship, what were the conversations, what discussions did you have with Erickson about Jefferson before, you know, pursuing this, uh, this deal? It does have, yeah. a, you know, and we're still, we're learning um, as each day goes by, but um, they're, of course they, they share the same um, agent um, uh, and, and Sebastian. Um, and uh, in Seca Sports, so they share the same agent. Um, of course, they both play from the same country, and there is some, there is some, there is connection between their families. Um, they're both around the same age as well, so there is that relationship. But we didn't have any conversations with, with, um, you know, we didn't have any conversations with Erickson about Jefferson. Um, you know, during the process, and some one of the things that you'll know that I'll just inform you. Sometimes we try to 
in some moments it makes sense to you ask a couple players about other players that you're thinking about, but in this situation, it just didn't matter. Kept it quiet. Yeah. To Bill's point, yeah, we kept it quiet. Thanks, Holly. We'll head back to Laura Armstrong at the Toronto Star. Hi again. Um, as you mentioned earlier, Bill, adding a designated player, they're going to be one of the most important players on your team. I wonder, as you reflect on this pursuit um, of a designated player, how it might have changed compared to maybe how you would have pursued a designated player, say, five years ago. As the league evolves, has what you're looking for in a designated player changed? From a club standpoint, I don't think so. Um, you know, if you look back five years ago, uh, Sebastian Javenko, Josie Altador came in the year before that, Michael Bradley and, and Jermaine Defoe. Um, you know, we wanted, you know, the way we looked at it was a player that's going to have a major impact on the success of our team. Uh, that's the, the most important thing. Al Zali mentioned um, uh, an attacking player who's going to help us score more goals. Um, but but the, we kind of have our own kind of benchmarks uh, when we look at a designated player, and those haven't changed since I've been here, at least in the last six years. Um, and, and, and prior to me, Tim Lywicki, um, you know, going out and make sure that Toronto FC with the designated player tag got guys who are going to help us win games um, and that are the difference makers. And so at the end of the day, myself, Ali, Chris, we felt that Jefferson is the difference maker that is going to help us win games and, and to win a championship. So from that standpoint, Laura, I don't think anything's changed from, from what it was when TL, um, you know, brought in the, the first wave of designated players. We have our final two questions of this portion with Bill and Ali with Joshua Cloak at The Athletic, as well as John Molinero at TFC Republic. Go ahead, Joshua. Thanks. Santos doesn't necessarily play the, the same kind of um, pressing style that, that you guys are, or that Chris is trying to make a bit of an, an identity within the club. Ali, in your research, watching games, talking to the player, what gave you confidence that Jefferson would be able to succeed in, in this style of play that Chris is trying to introduce at Toronto FC? Yeah, you know, um, we saw that he was powerful, aggressive, has great work rate, um, has good movement off the ball, has good movement within the ball. Um, and, you know, those uh, age is also a component uh, of that as well. Um, and so those are elements that um, we felt good about. Uh, and then also there is a conversation that exists during the process, which where Chris is in, included in that. Uh, and so getting an understanding, articulating what that style of play is and trying to, you know, understand and comprehend how the player responds to that, reacts, does that excite him? Um, and having that conversation, that, that dialogue took place. So, um, we're excited, of course, about Jefferson and um, how Chris wants the team to play. Um, and, you know, things change. You know, I, I remember when in 2015, um, you know, when I hired Jesse Marsh and we wanted to implement a new style of play at Red Bull that was more pressing. And that was something that was different. That was in 2014. And, you know, with clarity, but we had the same players. But I think with clarity and the infrastructure and the, the staff and the players that we have at this club, I think Jefferson will fit right in. He's got all the tools to be an impact player. We're going to give him time, just like you give everyone time when they come into your environment. You know, he doesn't even know. He just got a chance to meet his new teammates today for the first time and not even all of them. So um, we'll do that. But, um, you know, everything that we saw, everything that we researched, the conversations, um, we feel have fit really well into Chris's team. Uh, hi, Bill. Uh, John Monero here. Um, so fr from what I understand, when he first went to Santos, he asked club president if the number 10 jersey was available, which, um, you know, the number 10 in soccer, I think we know the significance of the number and even more so at Santos because that's where Pele played. Um, just wanted to know if, if you had heard that story and, and what you think that says about sort of the, his character that he wants to sort of take on the burden of that responsibility, you know, of not necessarily, uh, he's not following in Pele's shoes, do get me wrong, but to wear that number 10 at a club like Santos is a pretty big deal. Yeah, it's, it's confidence, it's personality, um, you know, it screams designated player in, in a lot of ways and that this is a guy who 
who wants the big number for a big club um, from the immortal Palais, uh, who wore the jersey at one point. Um, and our team, Alejandro, wears that number. And, and, and actually, we think it was quite heartwarming that uh, he chose number 30, which was the first number he had um, when he started his professional career at Zamora. So um, this is, this is a, 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 you know, when you look at that type of situation, there's certain players that step up in big moments. And to wear that jersey, again, that, that, that there's a heaviness sometimes that comes with that jersey, but the best uh, actually take it and they revel in it. And uh, we, we did hear that story and we thought it was um, indicative of, of the type of player and personality that we're looking to bring into this club that wants to be in big games, wants to be in big moments and wants to be, you know, kind of the man and the guy that can be a difference maker, which is, again, in our league, what a designated player uh, that, that tag is meant for. And, want and, to add to that? Yeah, yeah, I would say if you, you saw some of the things that, you know, as the negotiation and the conversation with, with bringing Jefferson to, to Toronto um, was kind of in an advanced stage. You saw some of the things that Jefferson said, and I thought that they were incredible and so respectful and um, really powerful um, that shares a little bit about who he is. And, you know, um, wearing the number 10 jersey at Santos is, it's a responsibility, it is an honor, and it is a privilege. And um, he filled that in a very, very, honorable way um and so it, and it's just reflective i think of the type of person that he is um putting aside the football and then you know you, need, you have to have the football to wear that that number at that club so um you know again that's information for us and that's data um that we kind of process as we try to make some of these types of decisions so um really excited um Taylor was my favorite player too <laughs> And sorry, folks, we do have one final question from Steve Buffery at the Toronto Sun. Go ahead, Steve. It's probably on mute. Steve. Is he on mute? Beezer, you're up. I know, I'm trying to, uh, can anybody hear me? Yeah. I can hear you. Oh, good. Wow, that's the first time. First time in four days, it's worked. Um, either uh, other fellow want to answer this. Um, when you were recruiting uh, Soteldo, um, did you guys come to a conclusion on how he might uh, complement, you know, your your, uh, your attacking players that you already have on the team, namely, you know, Pozuelo and and Josie and and some of the other guys? How he would fit in with that group? Yeah, and I'll say a couple of words and turn it over to, to Ali as GM. Um, we think he's he's the type of player that uh, is going to fit in incredibly well. Um, he and Pasuelo have very high soccer IQs. Uh, guys like Josie and Io um, will be able to benefit from his service and, and from his ability to create spaces. Teams are going to have to prepare uh, for us um, watching out not only for Alejandro and, and, and you know, Josie Ayo, but also Jefferson and Jonathan Osorio. And, and um, he opens up our attack. And so we think, um, Beezer, to your point, there's, there's going to be a lot of connections there. Um, and the soccer IQ uh, just went up on our team because we think he is a, a player that really sees the game at an incredibly high level, um, which, we again, we think is going to make us a better team. Yeah, the only, only thing I'll add to that is, you know, football is, a, is it's the ultimate team sport. And so every decision, whether a player comes in, whether a player goes out, whether player, it's always about how this impacts the entire team um, and the group. And so uh, in that sense, it's, you know, it's not just analyzing and researching and putting in the work of what player can we acquire, but we also need to have a we have an identity and an understanding of who we are as a club uh, and can we bring players in that can complement, um, you know, the existing um, uh, infrastructure that we have in players and staff um, because it really is about the collective and that's just, that's not only, you know, the sport of football, but that's the business of it as well. So um, there's been a lot uh, of good work um, that has been done at this club and within this organization. Um, within the last couple of years, but before I got here. Uh, and there's really good people. Um, there's good process. 
and which is why we are responsible for really bringing in and we put as much work into this as possible, bringing in good players, bringing in good staff that can complement and honor the good work that's that's been done. Thank you, Bill and Ali. That's all we have for you from this portion. Okay. Thanks. Good evening, Mr. Go. Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Jefferson. You can hear us. Can you guys hear us okay? Perfect. We'll begin proceedings with Neil Davidson at the Canadian Press. Thank you, uh, Jefferson. Welcome to Toronto FC. Uh, first of all, can you tell us what your first training session was like? And uh, what drew you to come to Toronto FC? La pregunta inicial es cómo fue tu primer entrenamiento con el Toronto y qué te llamó la atención para poder venir a la MLS y al Toronto FC. Bueno, primero el entrenamiento hoy fue muy muy bueno, me me gustó. Ya estaba muy ansioso por por entrenar con con mi nuevo compañero. Eh, y la decisión de venir a, a Toronto y a la MLS se me hizo muy fácil porque eh, viendo toda la historia lo que lo que pasó este club cuando yo yo lo veía veía cuando fueron campeones con Jovinko con Alti con, con Alti todos los jugadores y fue para mí muy fácil y a la MLS por ahí siempre le había, le había dicho a, a mis padres que es mi representante que quería venir a cualquier momento acá porque sé esta liga está creciendo cada día más y nada quiero ser parte del de crecimiento cuando ya sea una de las top del mundo. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, the training today was great. I was really anxious and excited to be on the field and start training with my teammates so I was looking forward for that moment and my decision to come here was mainly because I saw the whole history about the club the MLS I've been watching games of the team I know what I, I saw when the team was uh, champion MLS uh, cup champion with uh, Josie Altidore uh, Michael and Sebastian Jovinko so I was always kind of looking forward to to move to the MLS uh, teams um, I spoke with my parents with my uh, agent and I always mentioned that I was uh, looking for a movement into MLS, uh, knowing the, the growth that this league has had over the past few years. And I wanna be part of that history of making, being part of the growth and, and, and be part of it when, when it becomes one of the top leagues in, in the world. Thank you. We'll head over to Joshua Cloak at The Athletic next. 
Thanks, and thank you, Alejandra, for doing this, for translating. Um, Jefferson, when you look at the way Toronto FC plays, they have kind of a, a an aggressive pressing system that requires a lot of running, uh, maybe different from what you played at Santos. What gives you confidence that you will be able to, to succeed in, in this pressing system? Primero, mi confianza, mi personalidad. Eh, por ahí, cuando pude hablar con el técnico, eh, me mostró algunas tácticas, cómo, cómo le gustaría que jugara, eh, cómo tácticamente, cómo quiere que me pare. Nada, yo creo que sí, tengo todo. Ahí está, acá hay jugadores de muy buen pie. Y a mí me gusta jugar con jugadores muy buen pie para poder conectar y eh, poder hacer un buen, buen partido entre todos juntos. Y bueno, como dije, creo que lo más importante es la personalidad que siempre me caracteriza y nah, con eso creo que me basta. Uh, I trust in myself. I think I have the uh, personality and the, the to just be be there in the in the field and, and play the way he won. I, I had a chance to to talk with the coach Chris Armas and he showed me a, lot, a little bit of a, his tactics, the idea that he had for me and how he wants to see me on the field. So uh, I think we have a, a good group of players with a, a lot of talent. So uh, the most important thing for me is just be able to connect with them and I'm able to play as long as I have players with a a, a good like good talent and skills. So for now, for me, I think it's mostly having a, a good personality and, and, and trusting myself. We'll head over to Rafael at CBC Radio Canada. Well, uh, yeah, Hassan. Um, I was just wondering what appealed to you in, in choosing Toronto, not only as a place for you to establish yourself as a player, but also to establish your, your family for the next couple of years once the, the pandemic is over, obviously. ¿Qué fue lo que más te llamó la atención para venir a Toronto? No tanto la parte futbolística, sino también eh, para traer a tu familia a vivir por varios años acá a Toronto. Eh, primeramente, eh, sabiendo que iba a ser agradecido también con, con, con Bill, con, con Ali, con, con el entrenador, que me, primeramente me dieron la confianza y eso para mí fue fundamental cuando hablé con ellos. Eh, después, el, la ciudad, yo también pensé mucho en mi familia, quiero que, que mis hijos crezcan, en, en su crecimiento vaya siendo mejor, y nada, para mí fue, como lo dije al principio, muy fácil el, la decisión, porque por la ciudad, por el equipo, por la forma como me trataron cuando pude hablar con, con Bill, con, con Ali, el, el profesor, eso fue para mí suficiente. Um, I want to uh, say thank you to Bill Ali and the coach for the trust, because I think that was the main reason I decided to come to Canada. I just feel like they, they trust me, that they want me on the team. Uh, and that was, I had the same, that, that feeling as, as the first moment that I spoke with them. And obviously I wanted to have, give an opportunity to my family to have my kids uh, a, a good opportunity to grow here. Uh, so the decision was very easy for me, just knowing the city, the team, uh, the club, how it works and treat me because they treat me uh, great since the day that we start talking. So I was that was really easy for me to make the decision to move here. Thank you. We'll head over to Steve Buffery at the Toronto Sun. I was just wondering, did you get a chance to talk uh, to your uh, compatriot, Erickson Gallardo, about playing for TFC and playing in Toronto? And if so, what did he tell you? Sí, hablamos casi todos los días. Eh, me preguntaba, me, me decía que bueno, que acá, pues prácticamente me explicó todo. Eh, yo le preguntaba, me decía, hermano, acá es, es muy bueno, eh, las personas son muy sanas, siempre están pendientes de todo, pendientes de ti, te tratan muy bien. Y bueno, me dice la ciudad, ni, ni hablar, la ciudad es una de las mejores ciudades del mundo. Vas a estar tranquilo y bueno, siempre 
pensé eso y reflejando en mi familia, dije, creo que es la mejor opción para mí. Ojalá. Um, uh, we spoke every day since we know that uh, there was a possibility of me coming. He, he explained everything to me. I think he, he was great saying uh, how the, the whole uh, city welcomed you in, 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 a, in a positive way. Like everyone, like people are really kind in, in, in Canada, in Toronto. And he always told me uh, great things about the city, about the club, how people in the club treat you, uh, how they, they're always available to help and support you in any matter. So that was really important for me to know because uh, I wanted to have my, my, my family a good opportunity and, and it, it made all the decisions uh, easier to just to, to move here. We'll go over to John Molinero at TFC Republic. Uh, Jefferson, when you first went to Santos, you asked the club president if the number 10 jersey was available, which is a pretty big deal uh, because that's where Pele played. Um, what gave you the confidence to sort of take on the re responsibility and, and why did you not, I mean, how did you, how did you not shrink from that sort of heavy burden of, you know, of all that wearing the number 10 means wearing that number at uh, Santos? Cuando llegaste a Santos, le pediste al presidente que te diera el número 10. Eh, ¿Qué te dio esa confianza y esa seguridad de poder pedir la, la número 10 sabiendo que la responsabilidad que, que te daba por, por haber sido el, el número que vistió Pelé? Eh, ¿Y cómo hiciste para que no te quemara de alguna manera eh, esa responsabilidad y pudieras igual estar con, con buena performance? Creo que lo primero fue, o sea, yo cuando pregunto si la, la 10 estaba disponible, que el presidente me dice, sí, él pensaba que era jugando, que todavía me acuerdo y, y es súper chistoso. Eh, pero no, no, yo no llegué con la intención de pedirla porque, por Pelé, por todo, todo lo que representaba la camisa, sino que siempre de niño he gustado jugar con ese, con ese número. Y como estaba disponible además, Eh, para él yo creo que fue muy complicado una decisión muy complicada dármela pero bueno, también yo sabía la responsabilidad que, que eso trataba, así que traté de no, de no hacerlo como una responsabilidad para que no me pesara que, y que sea como como siempre lo, lo hice desde niño que me gustó, como me gusta ver con esa camisa agarrarlo más por, por esa forma y nada, igual como, lo, como siempre lo digo, siento que Tengo una, una personalidad muy buena que siempre me ayudó desde niño y por ahí yo creo que la personalidad estuvo por, por encima un poco de esa presión, ¿no? Um, I remember clearly when it when the moment happened, I went to the president and I asked as a joke if he could give me number 10. And it was really funny because he was he looked at me in a way that it, is this a joke, but uh, uh, I wasn't. I never got to Santos just with the intention of asking for number ten. But then he he said that it was a difficult decision because um, he didn't want to burn me with the with the responsibility. But uh, number ten was available. I said that it wasn't it wasn't going to be a lot of pressure for me because uh, I know the responsibility that it takes. But I tried to take it as a way that um, as as a kid I always wanted to wear wear number ten. So I think for me it was more like kind of uh, living my dream and uh, and I, I think my personality helped just to to enjoy having that number and not having pressure to to burn me uh, in that moment but it was a really funny moment when I asked the president about the about the number 10. Next up we'll go to Michael Singh at Waking the Red. Thanks Nick. Hey Jefferson, uh, welcome to Toronto. Um, I want to ask about that designated player tag. Do you obviously there's only three players who can be a designated player on a team? Do you feel any sort of pressure uh, coming in as a designated player here? Sabes que MLS tiene lo del jugador franquicia. Ese es el estatus con el que llegas. ¿Y crees que eso te genera alguna presión a ti o no 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 te quita el sueño? Pues para mí primero es un privilegio, verdad. Estoy muy contento por esa parte. No es una, una presión para mí. Yo vengo a jugar, vengo, como le dije cuando hablé con, con, con Sebastián, que prácticamente es mi padre, eh, 
quiero hacer historia en la MLS, quiero hacer historia en Toronto y nada, hacer lo que hizo mi compañero de selección, José Martínez, que como mi hermano mayor y pues, me veo poco reflejado en, en esa parte. Uh, for me, it's an honor to be a uh, designated player. I'm really happy for that, but I don't, I don't see it as a pressure for me. I just come uh, to Toronto to play, to enjoy. And as I mentioned to my agent, Sebastian, who is like my dad, that I just wanted to come to the MLS to make history, to, 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 to be able to win with the team. And, and that's something that I, I saw in, in, in my, my teammate, Joseph Martinez uh, from Atlanta. He's like, like my brother, and I saw him compete and succeed here. So that's what I wanted to make in Toronto, just uh, make history. We'll go to James Grossi next. Thanks, Nick. Uh, yeah, for saying you'll be wearing number 30. What's the significance of that number for you? Eh, eh, significado muy especial. Eh, empecé mi carrera jugando con ese número en Zamora por, por el club. Y nada, es muy especial para mí cuando me dice Seba, Sebastián que hay la 30. Yo dije, oh, eh, voy a como a volver como a comenzar ese sueño cuando empecé que para mí es algo especial y nada voy a no no va a ser por el por el número y nada voy a, voy a jugar por la camiseta y por, por lo que representa uh, it's very special because that number was the one that I used when I started my, my career in soccer is uh and I'm, when Sebastian told me that the number the number was available I was like wow this is amazing that's like like the same way that when I started my career in, in Venezuela, now it's like I'm starting a new dream with number 30. So it was really, really uh, something that I, 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 I was looking for. And uh, for me, it's more like I'm going to be representing the jersey, playing on the field with the jersey, but not, I'm, I won't pay too much attention about the number. It's more about like how can I put the, the things on the, on the field. We'll go back to Neil Davidson at the Canadian Press. Thank you. My understanding is the Brazilian season ended in late February. I'm just wondering when uh, was Jefferson's last game and whether he feels he's uh, ready to go or whether it's going to take some time to get into top shape. Eh, si no, no me recuerdo, fue, no recuerdo muy bien las fechas, sí sé que fue contra Barcelona y Guayaquil, mi último partido, eh, por Libertadores, y nada, no, pues, si te diría, tuve lo que fue la cuarentena, un poco esos días sin hacer nada, pero no, si el técnico decide que estoy listo para jugar, no, está a la disposición y nada, Lindo será para mí empezar este sueño porque vengo con, con mucha expectativa y nada, sería lindo porque puedo empezar a ayudar ya al equipo. We'll go back to John Molinero. Oh, uh, hold on, Nick, I have to do the translation. Go ahead. Sorry about that. Um, I can't remember the exact date when I had the last game, but it was against Barcelona in a, uh, of why I killing for Copa Libertadores. Uh, after that game, I uh, had to stay pretty quiet and stay put like in, in with quarantine. So I didn't really do much, but uh, I'm, I'm ready. If the coach needs me, I'll be available. And I think I'm just ready to start uh, making this dream uh, come true. Thanks, Alejandra. Uh, we'll go to John Molnero at TFC Republic. Thanks, Nick. Uh, Jefferson, when you were play when you were at Santos, you played under Jorge Sampioli. I'm just wondering, what was it like to play under him as a coach, and and what kind of influence did he have on you on in your career? bajo las órdenes de Jorge Sampaoli, 
sinceramente aprendí muchísimo de él. Me dio mucha confianza y nada, es un entrenador fantástico. Eh, solamente lo que puedo decir de él es que de verdad fue, todavía mantenemos relación, nos escribimos, él me escribe y nada, de verdad eso es para mí muy especial. Y nada, como lo dije, eh, es un entrenador muy top que me enseñó muchísimo, no tanto como jugador, sino también como persona, que para mí es mucho más importante. Uh, with Jorge, uh, I spent one year, which was really special because uh, he gave me the trust that I needed and he helped me a lot. Uh, we still have a good relationship. We still exchange some messages. And I think it was is a great a coach. He's a, a, one of the tops um, in South America. And he taught me a lot, but not so much on the field, but also as a, as a person of the field. We'll go next to Tom Bogart at the MLS. Hey guys, thanks for taking the time. Um, Jefferson, what impact, uh, if any, has Joseph Martinez's success in MLS had on your decision to come to the league, given that you came here, you know, just a, a couple years younger than what he was when he arrived? Influencia tiene eh, Joseph Martinez en ti para con todo el éxito que él ha llegado a tener acá en la MLS eh, para influenciar como tu llegada y, y pues empezar como tu carrera acá. Yeah. Sí, te diría que muchísimo porque, bueno, conocemos hace mucho tiempo, cuando yo era un niño que pasaba pelotas en, la, en los partidos, yo lo veía jugando en el Caracas y nada, siempre lo ha mirado y nada, después que nos, nos pudimos encontrar a, por, a través de, de Sebastián, eh, fue muy, muy importante para mí ese reencuentro y, y todo lo, como te dije, todo lo que ha hecho acá es, es maravilloso. De verdad, para aplaudir, un venezolano que haga eso da mucho que hablar y le abre muchas puertas también a muchos jugadores venezolanos. Y nada, eh, como lo dije, vengo a hacer lo que él hizo o, o mejor, o bueno, intentarlo por lo menos. Me voy a preparar de la mejor forma para, para hacer historia así como, como lo pudo hacer en, en su club. Uh, he, his influence was a lot for me. We know each other since we were kids, but I, I remember seeing him playing in Caracas and I was a ball kid just passing the balls to him. So for me, he, he means a lot. And, and I think we were able to uh, get together again through our, our agent, Sebastian. So it was really important to, for me to see him. I think uh, everything he has done is wonderful uh, uh, for himself and also for the Venezuelan soccer. Uh, he has opened the door for a lot of Venezuelans to come to MLS. So uh, for me, my, my role right now is to uh, keep working hard, try to do the same things that he has done and make history with Toronto FC. We'll go next to John Rojas. Thank you. Jefferson, gracias por el tiempo. Es una dos que va en la misma. Habla de Joseph, de la influencia de Joseph y la historia de Joseph en MLS. Tú quieres... Te, ¿Te interesa ser esa figura de muchos años en MLS o por tu edad también podría ser la MLS un salto para, para, para Europa? Eh, para mí lo más importante y lo primero es que ahora yo llegué, llegué, llegué aquí, eh, estoy pensando acá, acabo de llegar, de verdad, como lo dije, quiero hacer historia acá en MLS, hacer historia en Toronto, dejar mi huella. Y no, no estoy pensando todavía en Europa o algo. Quiero, como te dije, acabo de llegar. Quiero durar mis años acá, como te dije, hacer historia. Y no, no, todavía no estoy pensando. Todavía no se me ha pasado por la cabeza ese, lo, el paso por Europa. No, estoy pensando en Toronto FC y eso es lo más importante para mí. We'll go next to Bernardo Coro, at DDM Radio. Thank you. Jefferson, un placer saludarte. Dairon Quiroz de VDM Radio Miami. Eh, quería preguntarte, durante, desde que anunciaste o se anunció pues, que ibas a llegar al Toronto FC, ha habido muchas reacciones por parte de, de la fanaticada, si se quiere, venezolana en redes sociales, eh, de lo que han dicho. Quería, obviamente, darte la oportunidad a ti de que les explicaras tu decisión. Ojo, estoy eh, básicamente 
transmitiéndote lo que ellos piensan, no lo que yo pienso, eh, que les explicaras a ellos eh, tu decisión, porque pareciera que están un poco preocupados porque te veían a ti ya con un nivel tan alto que pensaban en que ibas a ir directamente a Europa después del Santos y que hayas hecho esa escala en, en, en la MLS, algunos los confundió. Quiero preguntarte directamente a ti eh, que, 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 que expliques tu decisión y que le, se la expliques al, fan, al fanático venezolano que quizás está preocupado cuando tu carrera recién está empezando con, con 22 años que tienes. Gracias. Eh, como lo dije, o sea, yo tengo, ahora tengo 23 años, eh, acabo de llegar acá, como lo dije, quiero, quiero hacer historia. Eh, ese pensar de Europa ahora no lo tengo. Eh, cuando estaba en Santos por ahí, en, un, en una manera, cuando estaba disputando a los Libertadores, estaba pensando un poco, pero bueno, por ahí las cosas no se dieron y bueno. Eh, está una liga, como lo dije, está creciendo muchísimo. Cuando pude hablar con el presidente, con, con todo el mundo acá, de verdad que fue algo que me llenó de mucha satisfacción, sabiendo que es un lugar tan sano, que mi familia va a estar bien, que yo voy a estar bien, voy a ser feliz. Y no, por ahora eso es Europa y las personas, la fanaticada de Venezuela se puede quedar tranquila que yo vengo acá a competir, a dar lo mejor de mí y bueno, siempre voy a estar de la mejor forma y igual eh, la fanática de Venezuela puede pensar lo que ellos quieran yo, esta fue una, una decisión mía con toda mi familia y bueno, yo ya eso es de su parte yo voy a estar tranquilo, como dije, vengo a ser feliz quiero competir al máximo y nada, dar todo de mí a, darle todo de mí a, a, Toronto, a Toronto FC And we have one final question from Carlos Suarez at Direct TV, who is not with us, but Alejandro will be reading out the question. La pregunta es, eh, ¿qué piensas del nivel de la liga? ¿Has visto la evolución? Eh, en nuestros países aún no se conocen mucho. Y... y ¿Y qué, qué crees que puede como esperar la gente viéndote aquí en la MLS? Algo muy bueno que yo con 23 años, sabiendo el nivel que estaba mostrando en Santos, haya venido acá a, a, a Toronto, a la MLS, eh, porque también van a ver con buenos ojos, buenos ojos a esta liga, como ya se está viendo, como lo vi yo, creo que eso es importante. Y nada. Eh, venir acá a la MLS fue muy importante para mí porque bueno, acá voy a crecer como persona, como lo dije, tengo 23 años voy a crecer, seguir creciendo como persona que para mí es más importante como jugador, tengo que llegar, adaptarme adaptar a mi familia y bueno, eh, ojalá sea lo más rápido posible para estar ya al 100% Gracias Jefferson Folks on the call, we will be welcoming Coach Chris Armas shortly. So please stay where you are. So he's, is he, uh, he's good then? Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. up here by myself. Yeah? Okay. Good man. Good job. Thank you. And, uh, I'll say that a lot. You know? <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Coach. Can you hear us okay? Yeah. I can hear you, yep. That's great. If you have a question for Coach, kindly use the raise hand function. We'll begin proceedings with Neil Davidson of the Canadian Press. Go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chris. Nice to see you again. Likewise. Uh, Chris, I'll let one of my colleagues ask you about uh, your newest acquisition. Uh, I'd like to ask about this weekend's game. Um, is there anything special for you going back to Red Bull Arena? 
Quite honestly, I, I'll take the questions about Jefferson, honestly, to, to be fair. It's, it's about uh, his, his day today and TFC. Um, we, we're gonna, we can have that discussion later and, and we'll talk about that. Um, but, but any questions about Jefferson, I'm, I'm, I'm all about it. I'll let somebody else go then. We'll go to John Molinaro. Uh, hi, uh, Chris. Uh, just wondering, so from what I understand, he had his first sort of training session today. Um, just wondering, how did he look? And I mean, what's the excitement level amongst, you know, his new teammates? I mean, you know, for his, his arrival and, and what are the chances that he might play on uh, Saturday? Yeah, look, the first thing I would say, um, you know, when you, when you uh, add a big player like this, I think it's really important to recognize, uh, you know, our board, our ownership, Bill and Ali. This is a, another statement by our club, um, the commitment to winning and doing it in a way we're adding big players. But but um, a player like Jefferson, that that is going to put you on the edge of your seat. You know, every time he gets the ball, something's going to happen. And, and we know he's a big player, but he's also a really good person. Um, when you get talking to him, he talks about his family and uh, his wife, Eliani. Um, and this is important to our club. So you, you combine those things and the fact that he's a winner, I think gives, gives us all excitement over here. When you talk about training, uh, it was kind of cool to see his teammates stick around. You know, for some players, it was, it was a regen day, um, but they were sticking around to see, you know, in support of, of, of him, but also see what, what is, what is he like? And, and what you got to see in a short time is, is what we expected that around the goal, he's really clear. He, he wants the responsibility of the ball. He's a good one V one player and can just make things happen on the other side of it. Um, on the other side of it is that he's committed to uh, running for the team. And as much as we talk about pressing and, and, and that type of dialogue, it's still about just meeting the demands of a high level game. When you have the ball, this is what's required and it comes really naturally for him. And when we don't have the ball, it's just finding guys that run for the team because there's guys that run for themselves and there's guys that run for the team. And you can clearly see that even on a day like today, maybe 40 minutes that he's committed in a big way, but he's really an exciting player. Can't wait for our supporters and, and MLS to see what he's all about. Thanks, Coach. We'll go to Raphael, CBC Radio Canada. Hi, Chris. Just wondering, what was your first impression of him like for you uh, prior to this meeting? Had you, you know, seen him before or did you get a chance to talk to him right before that or see just international games he had played? What did you think of, what did you make of his first uh, playing time that you saw? Yeah, look, we've, we've spent a lot of time watching him on video. So we... We knew that part of it. And then we've met with him a few times uh, via Zoom and another time even here, he's been in Orlando. So it wasn't the first interaction, but in terms of just seeing him uh, in person play, you know, I, I hopped into the 5v2 that was going on and I stood right next to him. Honestly, I wanted to you know, see if I can get on the same page and see what he's thinking, see how he's thinking about things. And even in a little segment like that, you can see, wow, how intelligent, uh, the passing, the ideas, uh, really cool to see on, on day number one. Um, and then the best part still was how quickly he gets on with his teammates, how uh, right away, um, you, you, you know with big players that, you know, it doesn't take them long to figure it out and, and look like he's been here for a long time. Just meeting some of the guys for the first time, passing a ball at them, but all of a sudden it looks like he's uh, been here for a while because it doesn't take that long for good players to get on the same page with guys. So that was good to see. And uh, I think his first touch was an upper 90 bullet. So this shows that uh, not only that, that he, you know, is, is wants those moments, but he can, he can do that. And, and we know he, he can figure out the final third. We'll head over to James Grossi next. Thanks, Nick. Uh, Chris, between his ITC and the quarantine requirements, will he be available for this weekend? He's available, sure. We can expect him to be available. And um, yeah, we're, we're just gauging where he's at physically. But 
you know, he's, he's coming fresh out of his season. So yeah, he'll, he'll be ready to go in some, in some way. We'll go to Joshua Cloak at the athletic. Thanks. Hey, Chrissy, I've asked uh, Ali this, when you watched video of him play, what gave you confidence that, that Jefferson would be able to, to succeed and thrive in your kind of aggressive pressing system? It's, it's easy to see straight away when you when you're looking for players, are they committed to the team? And that's Manchester City. It's these days. If you watch Chelsea, if you watch any team, uh, the Toronto teams of, of every year now, you either um, are committed to what's going on or not. It, it's it's an interesting one because we talk about pressing and high pressing and it's really just meeting the demands with and without the ball now. Yes, our team is going to be aggressive. We're going to play high up the pitch. We want to force mistakes. So when you watch him play, it doesn't take long to figure out, even when he's in the wide areas, uh, you know, the demands for his team was that he has to go all the way back and defend. And that's not an easy task for a playmaker um, to do. And he did it. Game in, game out. Why? Because he wants to win. He's a winner. So when you, okay, there's tactics and, and demands of what the coach asks, but then there's just, the commitment to winning, which on our team, you cannot play for this team if you don't work. We're a working team with the ball and without the ball. But uh, this was easy to see that he um, is committed to, to playing both sides of the ball. Next up, we'll go to Michael Singh at Waking the Red. Thanks, Nick. Hey, Chris, help all as well. Is Jefferson, a player that sort of slots in right away to the the shape and the formation that you've been playing early on this season, or are you going to have to alter, tweak your formation slightly to uh, include him? No, I, I don't think we'll have to tweak, you know, tweak uh, anything. You know, w with him, we have flexibility, um, and when everyone's healthy, this is a, uh, you know, even within a certain system, even within a certain structure, there's fluidity, and it'll be interchanging with with really smart players and smart attackers. They 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 understand space and time, so it's not going to be so rigid where you find him in one part of the field. Um, so we'll make sure we use him in, in ways that he can be most effective. Um, I can promise you, we're not going to ask him to run around the field pressing all the time. We want him to, like we do with Alejandro and, and, and Silly recent is, you know, even with Josie, put them, put them in spots to succeed, which is around the goal uh, where they can, you know, do what we all want them to do. So I think, no, mo mostly it's just flexibility with different systems, two strikers, maybe he's a winger in the interior spaces. He's really intelligent. He understands space. So we'll, we'll use him and depending who's healthy and, and who's ready, but I can promise you one thing, you'll see him attacking and being dangerous in the final third. We'll have, head over to Bernardo Cuerosh at DDM Radio in Miami. Thank you. Hi, Chris. Uh, I wanted to ask you, do you think that uh, maybe Jefferson Soteldo was the piece of if, if there was a piece left uh, that uh, you were missing to to be protagonist and to and to go for for this MLS Cup? Yeah, listen, I think there's um, he's one of the final pieces that I think really makes us feel confident to really push and win this year. I think that's clear. Um, that, uh, you know, Bill and Ali, you see the way they've built this roster, who's returned, who's uh, the belief in young players, and then to, to make a big commitment to go after one of the bright young talents out there that, yeah, we, we want to not only win, but we want to win in a certain fashion. We want to attack and we want to be, you know, we want to entertain and do it with the ball and in the final third. Of course, yeah, we'll, we'll be, we're working towards becoming dangerous when we don't have the ball, but it's clear. Sometimes the best defense is when you have the ball and can attack. So I think that's clear. Shows the commitment that what we're thinking about for 2021 um, and with the pieces that we have already, that, that he gives us the, a nice, nice, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a real belief on the inside that that's, that's one of the pieces, the final piece is missing. Thank you, coach. This wraps up our press conference portion of the new signing. We will be back shortly with coach to talk about the New York Red Bulls matchup on, on Saturday. So please stay where you are.